this year of taking part in the Javelin and Toyota Sprint Series in my Toyota Yaris T-Sport. Over the winter I've been modifying the Yaris to help get more speed on track and today we're at Kerber Sprint Course with Ollie's Secret Track Bays to see how it runs and test themselves. In the Sprint Series, times are ran just over one lap with cold tyres and brakes and with Kerber being a short sprint track with only one car at track at a time, it's perfect to mimic how the Yaris will perform in the Sprint Series. We'll be doing three layouts at Kerber, the single lap layout, double lap and the figure of eight to get the most out of the small sprint track itself. And of course, we're not here to test setups, but we're also here to test the limits. So, let's see how well the Yaris does around Kerber. Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video where today you'll see we're back out in the Yaris. You can see it's a little bit different as well from the last track day we did at Donington and we're here at Kerber Sprint Circuit. So it's the first time I've ever been here, just a little sprint circuit but I mean the main question is why are we here? As you probably heard in the intro I'm doing the Javelin slash Toyota Sprint Series so I've changed a lot on the Yaris so far and we're here just for a few setups, test a few setups out. Um, it's a good day here as well because with the Javelin you have to start your laps from cold. Um, I'll probably put this a bit more into the video about how it runs. So it's a good day to get some good setup testing in under the same circumstances that we will be racing in the Javelin Sprint Series as well. But the main question is, uh, what have we changed to the Yaris? As you can see, it's a little bit different. It's got no red plates on it. I've crossed out the headlights like I did at Japfest ages ago. But if you have a look in here, I think the biggest difference is, is that not only have we put more power onto the car with a new exhaust from power flow, we've stripped the whole car down completely. So there's no passenger seat, there is no rear seats, there's no trim at all. We've tried to make this thing the lightest as I can. So that's one of the biggest differences. The other differences as well, I think has made a massive difference is we've changed the tyres. So we're no longer on AED 08 RS tyres, which I find them all right, but the general track day community don't, not big fan of the AED 08s. But we've got some AO 52s on now, so we've got some proper tyres on, we've got some big boys on. So like I say, we're here just to test out the car, test out some setups. And, um, and yeah, I'll do another video at some point in the future going over the visit Garrison properly. But yeah, let's get on track and uh, let's see how it goes. So after talking about the Yaris for a little bit, we're starting our first run of the day. We're starting in this little infill bit first, instead of the normal start finish line as you've probably seen on other videos of Kerber before. But if you've not seen Kerber before, say so we turn right out of the little infield into our left, right, and then we come into this chicane right here. It's a nice big chicane before a little bit of a run before we get to the back corner at the very top of the track, which is a big right-hander. So we're gonna start off wide and then come in for a late apex. We can use all the track there on the left-hand side before the big run-up before the finish line. And that is a single lap of Kerbera finished. Finished now, we're at 36.9. We're going to run two, then we'll get the cam box on so you can see a first person perspective of the track. And let's just shut for a little bit and let's see if we can improve on that time any further. So that time managed to improve by almost a whole second, bringing the time down to a 35.8 as we get straight into run three. You'll just see here I'm trying out different gears. I can see short shift in second and short shift into third coming out this first bit. But it seems to really settle the car down coming into the corners. On video it looks like I'm braking very early for the chicane, but in saying real life it does feel like um, I'm braking at the right time. Obviously re-watching these things you sort of understand here that you, you know, you're a bit slower here, you're a bit slower there. Here's where you can improve. I'll leave it in third gear as well for this long right-hander at the top of the track, which at the time felt like it was a lot slower, but if the time comes up you'll see here it's a 35.7, so we have improved, whether that's down to the short shifting at the beginning, 
all from keeping it in third at the top corner. So once I've done the first three runs, I do bring the Aris back into the pits, bring down the tyre pressures. The were getting a little bit hot as the day was a bit more hotter than I was expected. But once again, we're also trying out, you know, the tyres and seeing how well they work and what pressures. So the first run after bringing down the pressures down is a 35.7. So we do improve on. Well, we do keep the same time as our fastest out of the first three. And on run five, we actually get a slower time somehow as we come down the main straight here. We're going to finish in a 35.9, which is obviously two tenths slower than what we have done. But before I could start changing any of the suspension setups, because it's obviously not a big track day organisation, Ollie has asked us all to marshal, help out with marshalling for half an hour of the day. And yeah, I do mine in the morning on the finishing post, so I'm just basically just waving the green flag once the cars have gone past. If there's a car stuck, I've got to wave a red flag. So RB racing does turn into RB marshalling, as you can see here, getting a bit too into the flag waving. And once I'd finished my marshalling duties, I changed the suspension setup and went back out on track for the last time on the single lap layout. So can I improve on this 35.7? Well, let's find out. Unfortunately, I can't. I do get a 35.7 once again. Now, of course, these aren't official times. There was no live timing throughout the day, and I wasn't timing at all. So these are just rough times of what I'm getting. But it looks like it was a 35.7 that I did get. So we now come out on track for the first time doing the double lap layout, which is exactly the same as a single layout. But instead of crossing the line, we're going to take the right-hand road back up right here. So coming down this back straight, instead of crossing the line and having to break in for the right hander just here, and we're basically going to be doing the same lap again. Obviously, this brings a few new challenges about where to break for that corner, as it's quite a quick corner for the track. And obviously, coming into this chicane, you're coming into it a lot slower than you were on the first run. So it's having to adjust your brain to tell yourself that you know you are coming in slow, you do have to break later, which did catch me out quite a bit on the first few runs on this track. But coming down the back straight, our banker lap for the double lap is gonna be a 106.6. So let's see if we can prove on that at all. Fly around on the second attempt of the double lap then, get a good first lap running break a little bit later then for this corner coming into the second lap and once again trying to tell myself to break a bit later coming into the chicane as I've not got as much speed as I did on the first lap but then I attempt to use a bit too much of the track. Shit. Yeah, unfortunately I did spin it coming into the top corner then. So if I watch the replay from the GoPros, I'm coming into the chicane then. So I probably break a bit later than that. But unfortunately coming up to this top bit then, as I try to use as much track as I can, but unfortunately just use a bit too much track. Put the tyres on the left hand side of the car on the grass. And unfortunately that spins the car around. But that is the last run before break. So let's go park the car up and let's go debrief the first half of the day. Right guys, been out for a few laps now. Um, yeah, car feels good. Um, obviously just testing out a few tyre pressures here and there. Uh, sometimes the back end feels a bit lively, sometimes it doesn't feel like turning. Yeah, like I say, we're trying out some different setups. Uh, sometimes it feels like the tyre is working, sometimes it doesn't, changing the pressures around here and there. Um, yeah, changing the dampening settings as well on the coilovers. So I've stiffened it up quite a bit since the first runs. Uh, brought down the pressures quite low as well. The day's really nice. I was expecting to be in this nice of a day, but it's turned out a really nice day. 
So yeah, get unlucky in this one. So yeah, uh, we're doing the double laps now. So we've done the single lap, now we're doing the double laps. And then we've got to figure a way out a bit later on. So yeah, let's try some double laps out and let's see how it goes. So we're back out at the break and we're still on the double lap course. So we've done a couple of runs before this run as well, just to sort of get the car, you know, get the confidence back in the car. Uh, after the spin, I had a bit longer than the hour break, obviously just to sort of cool myself down, cool the car down, uh, just to sort of reset myself. But this lap ends up being pretty good after my confidence has come right back. So I'm just gonna let it play out and let's see how much I can improve from that bank of that. And we get a 106.3 so i don't improve by that much but obviously an improvement is an improvement at the end of the day but that was the last run of the double lap variation so now we're on a figure of eight so for the first bit of the lap the first quarter should i say it's pretty much the same As soon as we get to this top corner this is where the changes start to happen so instead of going all the way down this straight we're going to cut across the track right here on the right hand side we're literally doing a figure of eight so now we're going backwards around the track which is really weird especially coming into this corner as it's off camera and the apex is very very late it's a lot later than you expect it to be and once again coming down this straight backwards and we're going to cut back into the track just here on the left hand side so we're now back on the normal variation the forward variation back into this top corner obviously we're coming to the corner with a lot more speed now uh, coming backwards from this straight so once again just bringing a different bit of variation into the track as obviously it's not a big track as it is but we're going to set the first banker lap then of a 108.3 of course doing this variation and cutting inside the track like that on the straights i have no idea how much grip the car has going into them corners but now doing that first run i've got a bit more of an understanding of how much speed i can carry through them corners so hopefully on the second run we can do a much better improvement than the first run And indeed we do we get a 107.1 on the second run so we're over a second improvement which is what we like to see and just like that we're into the final run of the day which is also going to be on the figure of eight variation so let's see if we can improve that time any further
and indeed we do improve on that time a 106.6 so another half a second found um, is definitely time to find in all three of the variations that we did today but I'm pretty happy pace wise we've got a few setups ready and we're ready for the Javelin Sprint Series warm up at Brighton Park Right guys, that's the end of the day for us. Uh, yeah, had a good few runs in the old Yaris. Definitely tried a few setups here and there, changed dampening, changed pressures. But yeah, some things worked, some things didn't. So um, yeah, so it was a good days out. Um, Kerb is quite a nice track actually. It's a, yeah, it's a great track. It's, well, it's a great track, little sprint course. It's nice to um, just throw the car about for a little bit. Obviously, you're not really going out with third gear, or apart from down this main straight, and actually bang it off the limiter. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice little track. I'd say it's quite local to us anyway, so it's quite nice to only be coming down the A5 pretty much to get here. But yeah, if you want to support the race build, of course, go grab yourselves an RB Racing shirt, Yaris shirt. Of course, go to my Instagram, DM me what size you want. Uh, help support the build. For us, we're tomorrow, back out on it tomorrow. For us, we're back out on it tomorrow at Brighton Park for the Javelin Sprint Series taster slash warm up. So um, yeah, it's an AM track day followed by a sprint, like taste sprint at the end. So we get four runs, uh, one untimed and three timed ones. So it's sort of a little bit of competition, but not. So it'd be good to get under that competition mindset tomorrow, even though it's only a few runs. But yeah, um, obviously that'll be the next video for you lot. So look forward to that one. Yeah, if you did like the video, don't forget to like, comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. A lot more Yaris content is coming. Of course, a lot more content in the Mazda 2 as well. To your race in the UK, so we'll be doing a few race series with that soon as well. And yeah, thank you for watching YouTube, and I'll see you in the next video at Brighton Park.